Shearing Speed Sports was incorporated in 1998. Our facility is located in Aurora, Minnesota. It's a small town, 1,300 people. Uh, we have 19 acres here. We have, as you can see, a first class shop. Our, our semi fits inside. We have full machining capabilities, full welding capabilities. We have an in-house dyno. We have our own test track outside. We have six snow guns, whole three-phase infrastructure, two groomers, and two pumps that, that feed all those. We have them full machining capabilities, so we don't have to bring a part out and wait for somebody else to do it. Uh, we have the in-house dyno, so if we need to do a pipe test or a clutch test, we can do that. And then we can go out and do a physical test, download the stuff on the computer, and gather the information and make decisions around that. We created a partnership with Amsoil to become the first true independent snowcross team, a non-factory-backed race team. And the first year out, we went and we took a gold medal at the X Games. We took second and third in the championship, and it was an exciting uh, season, and they really saw an opportunity for uh, their products in our market. Besides the fact that they have quality products, it's a quality company. I mean, they have great values. They take pride in their, in their products that they put out, and that's what we try to emulate too, is to really have a, a reputation of integrity. We have 19 sponsors. Everybody calls us the Amsoil team because of our commitment to Amsoil and our commitment to us and, uh, and the leadership we've shown in the performance side of it. We hooked up with Skidoo again two years ago. We re-signed with them to be one of their premier snowcross teams and we've had phenomenal success with the Rotex motors and the Amsoil combination. The cool thing about the Rotex motor, it's years ahead of competitors in the technology side. It's a lot more computer driven, it's a lot more programmable, uh, it's got a lot more forged parts than cast parts, and it's, it's state of the art in racing world. When we tear a motor down, we'll take them apart every race, every other race, just as a make sure. Uh, we see very little wear. It takes um, a whole exponential amount of time before we see the point that a part needs to be replaced. Uh, we see longer ring wear, we see less wear on the cylinders themselves. The, the pistons live a lot longer. We don't see uh, that peppering on the top like some of the other teams are seeing. So it, it's a whole combination of everything is just extended. When we went to the X Games, we were the only Skidoo team that ran the Amsoil products. I don't know what the other teams were running, I know what they're advertising, so I can't speak for them. But the, the one strong statement I can say, we finished every single race, we were on the podium, there was no other skidoo that did that. A part of our partnership with Amsoil is continuing to make their products the leader and the trendsetter in this industry. We spend countless hours in years testing the product to make sure that what the consumer buys is the best available. To say I'm an expert in oil, mm -hmm. I'm okay, but the guys at Amzo are phenomenal. It's like if I have an issue or one of my guys says we have a problem that we need to overcome or we see happening, they have a whole resource down at Amzo in their technical department, in their service department that can solve those problems. They're the experts. Well, one thing I've learned is that as soon as you hit success, it just makes everybody else want to work a little bit harder to knock you off of that pin. And the cool thing about Amsoil is they're not resting on their laurels. They understand that we're good today, but we need to be better tomorrow and we need to be great three years from now because everybody continues to get better. So what's cool for us is our tolerances get tighter, the motors get squeaked a little harder to run a little bit more out of them. Amsoil's thinking about that three years from now, what are we gonna be doing for motors? So when we come into a season, they don't go, hey, you know what? We need something better. They're like, we already have it. A piston goes up and down inside of a cylinder and there's four to eight thousandths clearance between the piston wall and the piston itself. Well, in that eight thousand clearance, there's a little bit of activity for the piston to go like this before the clearance. And one of the problems a lot of people experience is that the bottom part of the piston, which doesn't have a wear surface like a ring, will scuff on the side and it'll break down an oil barrier of, of an average oil. The one thing we notice when we run the AMS oil is we don't have that scuffing on the piston 
And by not having that, we, can, we have the full width of the piston going up and down. We lose that going back and forth, which is horsepower robbing. Well, if you take a connecting rod and the bearing and the piston as an assembly, that thing is going up and down 9,000 times every minute. So that means things are stopping and starting 18,000 times every minute. You can imagine the load on, on a bearing. That's why you need that extra protection and you need it on both the top end and the bottom end so that you don't break a bearing. It's not so much not only losing the, the, the friction reduction, but the initial impact and where the oil actually acts as a little bit of a cushion on the load of the bearing itself. It, it seems like year after year, tolerances get tighter, motors get more towards the ragged edge. Everybody continues to look for that little bit of advantage. And when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. With us running the AMSO, we haven't seen any oil related failures at all. We've seen a couple mistakes that we've made on ourselves. you know, leaning down the fuel, comp the fuel air ratio to try to gain a little bit more, or when we first go out to test for some altitudes, we'll, you know, maybe find that edge and go beyond. It's, it's, it's more of a fuel air mixture that we self create, but the oil lives day after day. Well, when I was racing in the, in the 70s, there was a different level of high tech. It was more of an oval racing. Now the premier racing is more of the snowcross, um, specific built snowmobiles. The, the environments are still super tough. It seemed like now everything has gotten cleaned up and the tolerances are tighter and you're trying to squeeze a little bit more out of everything because everybody's learned anything. And when we started the snowcross team in 1998, we had a huge advantage because we were one of the few teams running the AMS oil and it, it gave us an edge. You know, the chain case oils, the, the engine oils, everything, it gave us an edge. Now, 80% of the teams out there are probably running it and good for them, okay for us. Racing in general has become more complex with the, with the invention of the computers, the computer driven software that we run them. Our suspension travels are 12 to 14 inches now, whereas in 1998 we were six to eight inches. So the whole speed is accelerated, the whole violence has accelerated, the whole harsh environment for what an engine has to live through has to, hasn't really accelerated as well. So all that stuff happens and everything is getting, everybody gets closer every year in all forms of racing. So we need to continually find something better. And sometimes you gotta go just a little bit past that fine edge and with us running the dams of oil in our engines, for example, we can go past that edge a little bit more than everybody else can. Winter X Games, ESPN Winter X Games at about 8,000 feet. Uh, what happens at that point, you have a lot less air pressing down, going into your carburetors, for lack of a better word. You need to build up more compression to compensate for that. You need to lighten up the fuel load. You need to do something with your exhaust system. So we went out a month early, kind of you know went off our notes for what we learned in the past and, and came up with some really good baselines. And then when we went to the X Games the week before the race, we started testing out there and we had some good stuff going. Uh, day before the X Games, uh, some talk about some motors blowing up out there and possibly you know backing off the timing to kind of take away a little bit of horsepower and we we're thinking well knock on wood we haven't had any issues yet you know and then as the day came for the race you know the concerns were a little bit more in some of the other camps and I'm like good for us too bad for them <laughs> you know and so we went out and uh, first qualifier sled ran phenomenal came back in we we tore the the motor part just you know to make sure that we weren't seeing what everybody else was seeing and didn't see any issues Put it back together exact same way. Lo and behold, final comes around, we're up on the podium, and uh, we're the only skidoo to finish the race, I believe. I think there might have been one that finished in 13th that limped towards the end, but it, it was a pretty strong statement that, you know, we know what we're doing, we have great products in our, in our engine, and, you know, the proof was in the pudding there. You know, you 
increase horsepower, you need something to reduce that friction and reduce the heat. It seems like Amsoil is always ahead of that curve, knowing, kind of predicting what snowmobiles are gonna be like two years from now and planning for that. So when we come into the season, we don't have to go, hope our oil works, because we know it will. You know, and so that's just like, it takes a whole equation away of, of, of solving a problem. You know, that's a given. We know that's not gonna be an issue. And we know that the guys at Amsoil are working feverishly to make sure three years from now, we're still in that same position. You know, the one thing that I really like about the Amsoil, it's a robust, consistent oil that really could take an environment from plus 70 to minus 30 degrees and, and be consistent time after time. Here's something interesting that happens in our sport. Uh, you go warm up the snowmobile, you get up the starting line, you're ready to start the race, and all of a sudden a TV camera quits working. They shut all the snowmobiles off for two to five minutes, waiting for them to fix the cable on the TV camera or whatever. You fire up, all of a sudden you're instantly wide open without pre-warm up on the sled. What we notice is that the skirts on our pistons, they don't show the scratch marks, they don't show the cold uh, seize any marks with the Amsoil. So, in a situation like that, when you don't give it proper warm up or you don't have time to, to run everything at the right temperature, you got that cushion going for you. I believe that racing is the research that people need nowadays because it, it takes us to such an extreme environment. You know, the new snowmobiles that came out one year, they went them out, tested it, and for two months they worked great. They came out to our racetrack in two days, everybody's front end was broke laying on the track. It, it just, it takes it to that, out of that comfort zone and into that brutal environment that most things won't live. And, and if it lives, you push it a little bit farther. What we've learned is that a product comes to us from a lab or an engine dyno is a great baseline. We need to go and validate that in the field to make sure that those results correlate to what they're supposed to do. And we can do that with the resources we have and in a racing environment, it accelerates that whole testing tenfold. When the products come from Amsoil Dust, I know they've done their homework. They've done the legwork in the laboratories, They've spent countless hours verifying and validating, and they're very smart people down there. It comes to us, we'll put it out in a real life situation, on the track, on the test track, on our own engine dyno, and really push it beyond what those parameters are. And every product that Amazon sent to us has been very positive. There's a reason they call them the first in synthetics.